These general registers are memory themselves. They work similarly like the RAM and ROM, but they are referred or addressed using their names, not using the numeric value that we have discussed earlier. In this memory, the addresses, the contents are addressed through their ad address numbers, but these general registers are addressed through their names as AX, BX, CX, DX, SP, PP, SI, and DI. So in total, we have 8 general registers. The temporary general register is used to store data temporarily that will be processed immediately by the ALU or arithmetic and logical unit. Now these temporary registers store operands. Operands we will be discussing in short when we discuss how instructions are executed in general inside a CPU. So these operands are stored in here that will be operated on using the ALU and we need to remember that these general registers are also responsible for sorting the data that is passed on to them from the RAM or ROM. Flag is actually used to compute data bit by bit and pass it on along to the internal bus. So the flags are used to compute data or calculate the data that's, that is passed on to them. The internal bus is a connection between the execution unit and the BIU or bus interface unit. This internal bus takes all the data that is processed in the execution unit and sends it towards the BIU or, or bus interface unit. So now let's talk about this bus interface unit or the BIU. BIU is basically the spokesman or the spokesperson for the execution unit. The BIU or the bus interface unit fetches instructions or instruction sets from the memory or the input output device for processing in the execution unit and sends them through this internal bus. Or it takes the processed information or processed data and stores it inside these registers it also has one two three four five five registers five general registers named as CS, DS, SS, ES and IP registers these five registers also have the same functionality and the same operation or the same feature as the eight registers in execution unit that we have talked about this last register which is called IP or in the full abbreviation is instruction pointer. This instruction pointer has the job of storing the address of the next instruction that will be sent to the execution unit for processing or execution. Now this execution unit and the bus interface unit works simultaneously. The bus interface unit takes all the instructions or fetches all the instructions and the instruction sets and it sends each of these instructions through the internal bus. It fetches uh, 6 bit of instruction at a time. So this fetching of instruction is called instruction prefetch instruction prefetch so when the execution unit needs to directly interact with the outside memory and the internal bus if this execution unit directly needs to interact with this memory or input output devices the BIU or the bus interface unit stops working uh, it lends its ex external bus to the execution unit for the smooth communication so that communication can be performed smoothly rather than it piling up all these instructions to be executed
it stops piling up all the instructions and frees the external bus. So remember that this bus interface unit can fetch up to 6 bits of instruction. This 6 bits of instruction, when it fetches 6 bits of instruction through its external bus, this is called the instruction prefetch as I have introduced it to you earlier. This instruction prefetch queues up in the in internal bus and slowly gets executed one by one just like a queue inside a you know your favorite burger shop now let us start talking about this input and output devices input and output devices have their own circuits they communicate through these buses using their own input and output circuits so this input and output circuits have their own registers or own memory locations which are called the input and output ports. These ports are used to transfer data and the control commands control commands to the CPU and from the CPU. This input and output ports or registers are distinguished by the CPU because this input and output ports can only handle input and output instructions. So because they can uh, only handle input and output instructions the CPU doesn't get confused whether these are the general memory locations situated inside the memory or whether they are the registers or memory locations inside the input and output devices now this input and output ports have their own addresses and their own memory locations this is uh, their own individual ones so this input and output ports have their input and output addresses called in the same name as input and output address. The input and output ports or registers are the transfer points because they are connected to, uh, to the outside buses. To the outside buses as in the address bar, the memory, I mean the control bus and the data bus. So, this input and output ports sends the uh, command of reading the data towards the CPU so that the CPU can read it and process it and the data from this input and output device is sent through this input and output ports using this data bus. So, this CPU reads the data, executes it and packages it back towards the input and output ports or its registers and the address where those process data needs to be stored is sent through this address bar address bus uh, to the input and output address and the data is resent back to the input and output for pro uh, execution this data is then taken by the input and output device to the input and output circuit to be executed. To understand how a CPU operates, we first need to understand how an instruction is executed. The instruction has two parts. First, the first part is called the op code and the second part is called the operand so this opcode specifies or determines what sort of operation needs to be executed so it determines the type of execution and the operand and the operand is given the uh, address of the data that needs to be executed so it is given the address it is given the address whose content 
needs to be manipulated or being read. To execute any in instruction, the CPU goes through a process of fetch, execute, fetch and execute cycle. First, let us discuss about the function operation of fetch. So, the CPU first fetches any instruction from the memory. It fetches or reads, that would be more easier to understand, it reads instruction from the memory. Then, it first retrieves the memory, uh, it re retrieves the contents inside the address which is situated in the memory location and then decodes what sort of operation needs to be uh, operated, what sort of operation needs to be executed. It determines by decoding the, inform the data that is, that is retrieved from the memory. Then again, the CPU determines if it needs to fetch or read any further information. If the information that it retrieved at the first place is not enough. If it's not enough, then it goes back and fetches further uh, detailed information and then goes through the process of decoding. Now, let us look at what execute does inside the CPU. The CPU when it's the mode of execution when it's in the mode of execution it performs the operation on the data that it receives from the fetch command and performs the operation that needs to be done and stores the result back to the memory. So it first performs the required operation and stores back the data into the uh, existing location. Now we need to understand this through an example. Until then it will seem a, a rather messy business. So let's take the example of this 8086 Intel architecture. 